Hello and welcome back to the Bioscience Python tutorials. Uh, today we are going to be making a significance estimator for uh, the sequence alignment that you just made. So uh, a good example of why we'd need to do something like this is because we saw our alignment between our pufferfish um, and then we see our alignment between a pea plant. And you know, it's, it's, it's not very trivial to say the pea plant looks like a worse alignment, but how much worse? Is it a good alignment at all? Is it just chance that we've come across any of these alignments whatsoever? Um, and so what we want to do to create a significance estimate for an alignment is to give something a p-value. And the p-value is going to tell us how likely this data was to come about by random chance or and, 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 and how likely it is that this data actually means something. Um, and the p-value is, uh, I, I believe, this percentage estimate that our data has come about by random chance. And the significant, a, a, a result is significant is, is if there is less than 5% chance that something has come about by random chance. Okay, so we are going to code a p-value scoring uh, method into our alignment uh, tool. So I'm going to define get p-value, and we're going to do this by defining, um, we're, we're going to do this by checking random permutations of our sequences because we want to uh, check if there's any random alignment from the characters that we've given that would be a better alignment than the current one that we've spit out based on these sequences. And if, and if there's a lot of alignments that could be better, even if we see some sort of connection, like in the protein alignment between our hemoglobin and the plant, um, if there's better alignments than exist, if there's a lot of better alignments that exist, it's probably not a great estimate. It's, it's, it's probably very unlikely that these two are actually related, but we don't know uh, until we actually have some mathematical estimate of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, the boundary for how sure we want to be. And we're going to say, we're going to say n equals one e to the fourth. We're going to, we're going to try uh, about 10,000 uh, possibilities. So that's going to give us a really good idea of how significant our alignment is. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to run our alignment helper. So we're going to say we're actually just going to copy this from above. Um, or we're going to yeah we're going to run our alignment helper. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Wonderful. Okay. Run our alignment helper. We get a score and we get a path matrix. Okay. Uh, what we want to do now is we're going to preserve that score and we want to check other scores. We want to check how likely it is that um, our first sequence would align with any random permutation of or our, that our first sequence aligns with the second sequence and any random permutation of the first sequence will align with the uh, second sequence. Um, and so we're just gonna check that by doing random permutations. Um, so our score is already cataloged and we're going to say for i in range n, um, this is gonna make sure that we always have an integer. Um, our sequence one permutation is going to be equal to a empty string joined with random. We're going to have to import another package here. We're going to have to import random. Okay. Uh, random dot sample. Okay. Uh, sequence one and our length of sequence one. And that is going to give us a random sample, a, ran a completely random permutation of our sequence one. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say score uh, 
permutation. And we don't really care about the path matrix in this case. We're actually we're actually gonna we're gonna ignore it here too. Um, we're gonna say this is equal to our alignment helper of uh, sequence one permutation. Okay, and that's gonna give us our score our score for our permuted first sequence, and our k score is going to be. Um, Sorry, not our k-score. Uh, we're going to say if our score permutation is greater than or equal to, if we even have a sequence that is equal to the alignment that we currently got, if it's not explicitly better than this permutation, um, we are going to increment a value k. We're going to set k here equals 0. OK. Uh, and what we're going to return after this is we're going to return k plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So this is going to be the fraction of samples that we tried, permutations that we tried, that were greater than, that had a better alignment score than our original alignment out of our total n samples. And we're going to do plus 1 because we know that our score is included in both of these. So we have at least, if we try 0 permutations, then we, we, we get a 1 out of 1 significance. But we want to try a lot of these. So we're going to do this in a way where we're actually going to make it a little bit more customizable. We're going to say parser.addArgument. Uh, just p, um, and we're going to say action equals store true, uh, and help equals include, yeah, include p value measurement of significance. Great. Great, great, great. And uh, pretty much, we're going to make this optional too. We're going to say dash p. And if we if we include that dash p argument, we are going to run this next alignment. So if args dot p uh, print uh, align dot get p value. If that's a method. Yep get p-value, uh, and try it for sequence 1 against sequence 2 for our alignment. Um, great, great. Uh, and we're just going to print this in sort of a nice way. We're going to say significant, uh, we'll just say p-value, p-val is equal to this whole deal, cut that, we're going to say round that to two decimal places. All right, so we can run this again. It'll just run normally. But if we add this dash P argument at the end, what we're going to get is that our alignment is going to run uh, 10,000 times. And we're going to actually see the significance of it when it's all done. Um, and 10,000 might have actually been a little bit much because running 10,000 alignments on anything is quite a bit. So if it doesn't stop here in a few seconds, uh, I'll actually change it to be a less value. Yeah, yeah, it looks like we're going to need something a little bit less. So let's let's just try let's just try 100. Um, we don't actually have to change it there. We'll just set that as our like preferred value. Um, but if we run get p value sequence one sequence two and then n equals 1e e to the 2, say we run 100 alignments in total. And that will give us, uh, I believe, a pretty quick estimate of how well our alignment actually did. Yeah, p-value 0.1. So that means that even though this alignment is eh, could be questionable, I mean, when you look at it for the first time, you see not a lot of things are actually alignment, aligning. Uh, this p-value still says that less than 5%, actually actually around 1% of 
all permutations of all null hypotheses here were actually correct. Uh, and so it's not chance that this alignment occurred. Um, so we can run the same thing between uh, the human and puffer, puffer, HBB, FASTA, P value. Um, and it's likely that the P value is going to be much, much less in this case. Um, our P value might even, yeah. So it's still rounding to 0 0.1 because there's this sum, this sum amount there, but still this, this alignment's much more significant. Um, let's just test that really quick. So I'll say round this to like four, um, cause that ran. And um, that's it. You've officially made a, the alignment tool that has kind of turned biology and sequencing on its head. Um, you are able to make this, you are able to improve it. If you'd like, if you're looking for more things to research and do, look up the Smith Waterman local alignment algorithm. It takes this algorithm and it changes it to do local alignment so you can find small DNA clippings in huge genome sequences uh, really, really efficiently. But it uses a lot of the same logic and dynamic programming that we used here. But congratulations, uh, huge accomplishment for any non tech users, and you know, keep coding. Bye-bye.